Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Appreciate you tuning in this day on uh, this fine day. I pray that you had a good day and are having a good week. So today in our series of reading the Bible, we're in Genesis chapter 11. We're going to be reading chapter 11 and 12. So let's begin. The whole earth had the same language and vocabulary. As people migrated from the east, they found a valley in the land of Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, Come, let us make oven fire bricks. They used brick for stone and asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the sky. Let us make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered throughout the earth. Then the Lord came down to look over the city and the tower that the humans were building. The Lord said, If they had begun to do this as one people, all having the same language, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down there and confuse their language so that they will not understand one another's speech. So from there, the Lord scattered them throughout the earth, and they stopped building the city. Therefore, it is called Babylon, for there the Lord confused the language of the whole earth. And from there, the Lord scattered them throughout the earth. These are the family records of Shem. Shem lived a hundred years of father, Arkbashad, two years after the flood. After he fathered Arkbashad, Shem lived 500 years and fathered other sons and daughters. Arkbashad lived 35 years and fathered Shelah. After he fathered Shelah, Arkbashad lived 403 years and fathered other sons and daughters. Shelah lived 30 years and fathered Eber. After he fathered Eber, Shelah lived 403 years and fathered other sons and daughters. Eber lived 34 years and fathered Big, La, Big Lake. After he fathered Big Lake, Eber lived 430 years and fathered other sons and daughters. Peleg lived 30 years and fathered Rehu. After he fathered Rehu, Peleg lived 209 years and fathered other sons and daughters. Rehu lived 32 years and fathered Shirug. After he fathered Shirug, Uriu lived 207 years and fathered other sons and daughters. Shirug lived 30 years and fathered Nahar. After he fathered Nahar, Shirug lived 200 years and fathered other sons and daughters. Nahar lived 29 years and fathered Tira. After he fathered Tira, Nahar lived 919 years and fathered other sons and daughters. Terah lived 70 years and fathered Abraham, Nahar, and Aram. These are the family records of Terah. Terah fathered Abraham, Abram, Nahor, and Haran. <coughs> Excuse me. Haran died in his land, uh, and Haran fathered Lot. Haran died in his native land in Ur of the Chaldeans. Chaldeans. During his father Terah's lifetime, Abram and Nahar took wives. Abram's wife was named Sarai, and Nahar's wife was named Belkai. She was the daughter of Haran, Haran the father of both Melchi, Melchi and Askai. Sarah, Sarai was unable to conceive. She did not have a child. Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, Haran's son, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his sons Abram's wife, they sailed up together from Ur of the Chaldeans to the land of Canaan. But when they came to Haran, Haran they settled there. Terah lived 205 years and died in Haran. Chapter 12. The Lord said to Abraham, Get up from your land. Go out from your land, your relatives and your father's house, to the land that I will show you. 
I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. I will curse. Sorry, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse anyone who treats you with contempt. And all the blessings on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him. And Lot with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. He took his wife Sarah, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan. When they had came to the land of Canaan, Abraham, Abram passed through the land of the site of the Shechem at the Oak of Moriah. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he moved on to the hill country east of Bethel and pitched his tent. With Bethel on the west and Ai on the east, he built an altar to the Lord there and he called on the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed by stages to Negev. There was a famine in the land, so Abram went down to Egypt to stay there for a while because the famine in the land was severe. When he was about to enter Egypt, he said to his wife Sarah, Look, I know what a beautiful woman you are. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, This is his wife. They will kill me, but I will let you live. Please say, You are my sister, so it will go well for me because of you. And my life will be spared on your account. When Abram entered Egypt, the Egyptians saw that the woman was very beautiful. Pharaoh's officials saw her and praised her to Pharaoh. So the woman was taken to Pharaoh's household. He treated Abram well because of her. Abram acquired flocks and herds, male and female donkeys, male and female slaves and camels. But the Lord struck Pharaoh and his household with severe plague because of Abram's wife, Sarah. So Abram sent for Abram and said, What have you done to me? Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Why did you say she's my sister? So that I took her as my wife. Now here is your wife. Take her and go. Then Abram gave his men orders about him. Then Pharaoh gave his men orders about him. And they sent him away with his wife and all he had. Alright, so. Now, I'm not a Bible scholar. But. I think chapter 11. 1 through 9 is on emplacement because they're talking about the Battle of Tower of Babel. Babylon, which they're having all the same language. But in chapter 10, in verse 5, each with its own language. So it's like they're reversed. So... God's not God's words perfect, so it's there for a reason. But that's just I think ten is a going in depth about chapter nine and verses chapter eleven verse ten through thirty one. So out of chapter eleven, what did I see? Uh, in, in this chapter, you see what looks like when it's central location of worship to the moon. That's what they were doing. They were trying to get to the sky, get as high as they can to the moon. Uh, Ur, they, it, God caused the family of Abram and his family to move to, uh, Ur, Sorry, uh, Haran is because that's where God was going to call him in chapter 12. 
Now, obviously, chapter 12 is Abraham being called by God. Now, if you notice in chapter 12, Abraham leaves to go to Egypt because of famine. But nowhere in this chapter does God speak to Abraham and say, I want you to move to Egypt. So nowhere do you see that. Nowhere do you see Abram praying, asking God for guidance or permission to go to Egypt. He just decided to go on its own. Maybe he was just trying to follow where things were good and have triumph. So that brings up a good point today as believers. When we follow God, is it because we're going somewhere where it's triumph and positive and blessings? Or are we following God because that's where he wants us to go? I mean, because God may call you to a bad situation. God may call you into a desperate situation. A hard and destructive situation because maybe he wants you to be that light to the world light to that community community or place wherever you're calling god's not always going to call you to a life of luxury so just think on that i really think if you're being called to something pray to make sure it's not something that it's your desire or being triumphant, or blessings, or being rich, or whatever it may be, maybe whatever it is, because you want to be following the God with the right heart. You want to be a blessing. You want God's blessing. You want to be a blessing to the calling. You want to be a testimony for God, a testimony of Jesus. Who died on the cross, rose again on the third day for our sins. That's who you want to be a testimony for. That's who you want to share the story of. Not your story of, oh, God took me from A, B, C, C, D. Yes, there's a part of that that's true, but you don't want to make the story about you. You want to make the story about Jesus. You're all wondering what this church, church says. It says, stand for the flag. And then on the back it says, kneel for the cross. Oh, sorry. Here. Here it is. It says on the bottom right here, kneel for the fallen. Sorry. Stand for the flag. Kneel for the fallen in God. This says fallen, but you can add God to that too. Well, thank you for joining me today and reading Genesis today. So I look forward to getting back tomorrow to reading, uh, let me see, reading the story about Chapter 13 and 14 about Abram and Lot's separation and Lot's rescue. Alright, well, see you next, tomorrow, sorry, tomorrow. And if you like the video, please click the like button. If you have a comment or question, leave them in the comment section below. And I'll read them and answer them. And if you want to, please subscribe. Thank you. Bye.